everybody <laughs> I was trying to catch up here my goddamn puffco broke the first week that I got it dabbing it up too much so I'm kicking it old dab straw days aka crack pipe feelings what the fuck am I what am I doing here holy shit happy Easter everybody it's fucking crazy it's been so awesome to fucking uh, get away from work. We had, I was sick all week. I literally did nothing, but uh, I went and did, we did the live show on um, on Monday with Dude Grows, and we had the Wednesday show. And then after that, I pretty much just took edibles. I took about 1,500 milligrams of edibles this week. <clears throat> I just racked out. I had an awesome week. <laughs> Monday we did the live. Wednesday I do gross. Tuesday we recorded Jug Dealers with Gabe. Man, what a spoiled uh, week I had. Monday hung out with uh, James Bean from Seeds Here Now. Hung out with I Can THC. Uh, and then the next day hung out with the dude who invented live resin. I mean that's that's pretty fucking crazy, right? Kind Bill, if you guys know. Kind Bill, what up, Joseph Baker? Wicked baby, Scotty K, Shane Hog, Double A, Papa Ricci, Boog. It's my buddy. Paulie was here early. Fuck yeah, so good to see y'all. What y'all smoking on? I am smoking on something very unique. Something that fucking... So I got some some good rosin from uh, Laser Cat here in uh, Denver, Colorado. And it's Zuffy. It's Banana Puffy times Skittles. Dude, it is like... It's ironic because last week on Jug Dealers, we interviewed uh, P-Bud. And he is the guy who brought us Chem 4. And I've been searching for some Chem 4 for like ever and ever and ever. And now this Banana Puffy times Skittles. Dude, it's it's hit me with that Chem, that chem 4 vibe. Shout out to my favorite name in all of... Uh, of all of the internet worlds, Mr. Tinker Strain. Shout out to all you Aussie fans out there. And speaking of the guy who fucking uh, hooked us up with fucking so many cool people, I was just telling the story about Tuesday hanging out with Kind Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, you know my friend Gabe. Jug dealer Gabe is here. What's up, man? How are we doing? I'm doing good, bro. Especially now that you're here. I had literally, I was just, I was just going to brag about hanging out with fucking... So many cool people on the Monday panel. We got to hang out with the uh, I can THC, you know, Matt. And of course, so Monday I got to hang out with him. And then Tuesday we had the fucking hash makers panel, which was absolutely epic. Fucking Justin from harmony, kind bill. And my old buddy, Telly from Incredibles. I don't even know if you knew me and Telly go back like yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cause Telly, Telly's still a kid. He's still a kid, yeah. <laughs> someone it was funny, someone on the P on the Peabot episode uh cracked down on me because I, I was I was calling I was calling people kids and he's like he's like 
what are you talking about? He's like, you ain't even got gray hair. And I was like, bro, I'm 48. Like, just because I ain't got no gray hair doesn't mean I ain't old. <laughs> I I got the same thing. I kept calling uh, uh, Chem D an old school strain. And all these old heads were commenting like, oh, Panama Red, that's old school. It was like, all it's, right. It's, it's like we were saying in the episode, though, um, you know, when we started smoking weed in the late 80s, early 90s, um, everything was called for where it was from. Like you had Humboldt County Kind or Tompkins County Kind or, you know, I, Old think, Creek Kush. <laughs> I think one of the earlier ones I remember was G13. You know, but there was a whole, you know, there was the whole story behind G13, too, where it was, quote, unquote, government weed. Yeah. yeah. In that story, even though, like, you know, you take those stories with a grain of salt. G13 is such a fucking unique strain. I almost believe it. You know? I mean, I was always told that it was um, that they had fields down in Mississippi where they grew it. I think it was Mississippi. No. And those were the only legal fields in the United States grown by the feds. Is that where that dude got his tin of joints or whatever? I remember that guy. Don't know. But it was definitely, and it was pretty unique. Like, that was, I guess that was, like, the first, like, real, real kind bud I ever saw was that wow. G13. Just remember it being, like, super dark, and it had, like, these almost, like, yellow hairs on it <laughs> i'll never forget my first kite bud was the silver sil super silver haze that shit was everywhere forever everyone had it i don't know what the deal with it was but it seems like everybody had that shit back in like 98 dude i used to have <coughs> i was on uh <coughs> like I went to a bunch of Grateful Dead shows and <coughs> I met these guys named Matt and Dan that used to have this band called Grass. And they used to, they used to <coughs> they used to get us Kind Bud and the guy that they got us Kind Bud from this is like 1993 94 and the guy they got us kind butt off, it's summer 93, as a matter of fact. But the guy they got us kind butt from, or the guy they got kind butt from, actually sold kind butt to support his crack habit. What the hell? And he That's just, the kind of story. It only happens on a dead show. You you went you went into his place and they just had he just had all these fucking jars of different, different bud. What do you got there? Oh, it's our buddy taking tops. Fucking he uh, he does this glob father like shit. It's this is not a legal. This is not a product that was purchased from a store. That's okay. This is from a guy, <laughs> you know. I'm all about that. Yeah, I mean, who who am I talking to? I'm talking to the fucking. I mean, you're, you're the original man. So I imagine everybody in the chat knows fucking jug dealer gay. But if you don't. This, this is my mission to make sure everyone fucking know. Gabe, this, I always like to say, Gabe knows everybody, yet not enough people know Gabe. So fucking literally every time I bring up anybody, like some little like friend of mine, like, oh, did you know, you know, bike? He's like, oh, of course I know bike. Fucking Aaron hung out with him, you know. If I don't know people, I know people who know people. Like, it's always funny. I always get phone calls from people when someone applies for a job, you know, and they'll be like, this guy <laughs> said worked in Colorado. Do you know, do you know who he is? And even if I don't know who they are, I can always, uh, I can always look it up. Like I can always call someone and be like, Hey, this so-and-so said he worked here. Tell me about him, you know? <laughs> well there's tears to this thing like i know a lot of cannabis people like in the uh, if you took the whole population of the united states i know a lot of cannabis people and then like the guys i work with like scott and brett they know a lot and jaron he knows a lot but then you're above like like you know fucking everyone well, it's dude. Funny it's crazy, though, so. for me it's funny though for me because you know i've been i've been growing weed since 1996 so 28 years. 
<laughs> and like there was a I think that's long... when I started smoke. I started smoking in '96. What a well, weird. There was a long time in that period where like you didn't advertise that you smoked weed. You just happened to be the guy at the party that had the best weed. Of you course. know what I mean? So it's like. You know, there was a long, long time. I mean, I tell people the story of how we brought sour diesel to Colorado and like my buddy flew it out here in um, in a in a uh, spring green salad in nine in 2000. And the reason I know it was 2000 is because this is before the TSA existed. You know, so there, there was there was no TSA back then. And like. You got to be pretty old to know to remember back when there was no TSA. You figure you got to oh, be yeah. if you were, if you were running packs or anything back in the day. The borders dude, used to dad, be a lot more permeable. Dude, my dad used to my dad used to run pharmaceuticals, and he used to fly down to Atlanta with like he used to wear Banana Republic vests, and he would have a hundred k in the pockets in all, all the pockets in the vest. And he would fly down to Atlanta in the morning and he would take the money down there and then uh, and then he would uh, get a briefcase full of like pharmaceuticals and then he'd get on the evening plane and he'd fly back. And then he'd have like a month's worth of like Percocet, Valium, Barbiturates, like all kinds of crazy shit. But uh, awesome. we, I got that, I got that sour D in 2000 and I grew it for like two or three years in my little place. And I never, dude, I had a girl that I wanted to hook up with once and I got a hotel, bro. Like I got a hotel. <laughs> like I didn't. Good man. <laughs> we always bring... joke that that's like the, the downfall of every grower. It's like, don't show your fucking girlfriend. Don't dude, show your fucking girlfriend. Dude, the guy, the guy that I used to work with, um, he got busted. Uh, in fact, summer of 2000. That's why we started growing together because he had gotten busted. Like he was just, he was full tilt. Like he's like, as soon as I get busted, start something else. But he, uh, he pretty much had pissed off an ex-girlfriend and they went, they went and dimed him out to the cops, you know, and get getting dimed out to the cops in 2000 was uh, was a thing. You're going down. You know what I mean? So I had it back in the, the black market days. You know, I'll probably get me too for this now in this era. But I had a hard rule. I will not do business with a woman with a kid. I won't do it. It, like you will flip on me fast like that as soon as they breathe on that kid you're gonna flip on me that was my one hard rule sorry <laughs> ladies with kids but yeah we're doing that's how i i got through all my my drug addictedness that i was doing is because i was a grower and people who had pills wanted weed and i could trade it just blinds like oh a pound it just a pound just disappeared it doesn't matter how much money i just spent you know just just a pound of weed and i'd get a thousand fucking vicodin in a bag mailed to me and a pound would disappear and i just you know i lived like that for way too long i never i never fucked with pills because of my dad like i never That's smart i never had any desire to to do, fuck with any of that shit, you know? And I always tell people, like, if I was to tell you my life story and, like, <laughs> the shit that's happened as far as, I mean, you know, like, my pop was the biggest ma maker of crystal meth in 1977 in the entire country. Yeah, for people that haven't heard the drug dealer story, uh, there there is uh, some credence to the fact that, that Gabe's dad might have inspired some of Breaking Bad. <laughs> It was different colors, though. They had to change I the colors so they people. get sued. So he, he used to, in 1977, he used to make his feet. So if you if you go back, we'll tell the little story real quick. If you go back uh, in 1975, <coughs> my, dad, my dad used to sell P2P. P2P is the main ingredient in making crystal meth. Well, when yeah. Nixon went and did the federal drug scheduling 
P2P all of a sudden became illegal, you know? <clears throat> and so my dad had been selling it to all these, uh, had been selling it to all these people. And uh, he decided to start making it all on his own because most of the people he was selling it to were um, Hell's Angels, pagans, gangsters. <coughs> As my dad said, uh, failed burglars and criminals. You know what I mean? And so he decided to start making it himself in which he really made the best stuff out there in which on top of it, just so everybody would know it was his, he colored it purple, you know? And every time purple. I tell that story to people, people are always like, oh man, that's like Breaking Bad. And I'm like, no, 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 it's the other, it's the other way around. <clears throat> so it's definitely, yeah, it's uh, definitely. <laughs> just as a, just as George is commenting here, he says, when is Jug Dealers going to have New Millennium available? And the answer to that is that the site is ready. I turned it in to the 5-8 the boys. Lee and uh, Mike are going over it this week. And I'm hoping uh, as soon as April 2nd. I told them we can't launch April 1st. No one will believe us. No, that's <clears throat> bad luck. I like, yeah. hey, look. So, yeah. April 3rd is my oh. kid's birthday. So it'd be a great segue. Nice. <laughs> Were you hanging out with him? Fucking guys no, know? no. This was his. This was his mom's weekend. But we were actually just talking about. Uh, in fact, when you hit me up, that's why I couldn't answer because I was on the phone with him discussing uh, math and science. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> Um, well, I always believe in like weird coincidence stuff. And I was literally thinking about like messaging you and like, and I was like questioning in my head. I was like, gosh, oh, should I text him or should I Instagram him? And then I looked down at my phone and I have a text and it's from you. And I was like, yeah. holy shit, dude. I was literally just about to text you. <laughs> so yeah, was, you saved me from sitting here awkwardly. I was just going to tell stories about how cool Tuesday was and the store is a kind bill and all that crazy shit. It's kind of crazy to know the guy that invented live resin, right? It's a weird thing. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting it's definitely, guy. you know, I'll be eager to see what happens over time as far as how people um, just kind of accept it. You know, like, I, I feel like, you know, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, rosin. <laughs> unfortunately rosin was uh you know it's just kind of taking the spotlight you know and i feel like a lot of that is because of just mis miseducation you know and, and just good and well, honestly, was a hype train right well, like good, like i was about to things say things that market. sound true we talked about this about like things that just sound true and when you say it's like oh it's there's no hydrocarbons it's all pressed it's cleaner that just sounds true right i mean look in in that respect, in, in the respect, <clears throat> I guess if you really break it down, you can't even say it is because the truth of the matter is, um, terpenes are hydrocarbons, you know, and and arguably they they are they are arguably uh, you know depending on you know the one thing I really try to impress upon people that's so important is it's really a lot about the temperature that you're smoking at. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, you know, if you're, if you're vaping north of 500 degrees, you know, north mm -hmm. of 450, really, there are certain terpenes that convert to benzene and aldehydes, which are right, car heavy. carcinogens, right? <laughs> yeah, like, legit, like, carcinogens. so realistically, you know, I always say to people, like, if you get that, like, that burning sensation in your lungs, chances are, you smoked your dab too high and um, and it basically flashed a certain terpene that, you know, it's done because it, it didn't it didn't uh, you know how <clears throat> a lot of times. So there's there's a certain I don't even understand it, but there's like a certain group of kids nowadays that like, you know, they, they're looking in the in the nail and they're like, oh, it's got to be it's got to be there can't be a puddle in there. And I'm like, no, a puddle's good. Like a puddle's good. Like yeah, when you yeah. see that bubbling and not just psh, like, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I mean, and my whole thing is like, 
if you have to do two or three dabs as opposed to one, like you're probably a little bit better off. But if you're gonna, you know, it's funny. I think I, I, I shared with you on Instagram, um, my 60, <clears throat> 67 year old neighbor came over yesterday, you know, and he, he shared with me that he's been retired for four years. Um, but that he has started, uh, smoking and doing mushrooms. <laughs> Classic. I was like, Whoa. that's great. You know, but it's that's really, <clears throat> you know, it's really finding what works for you, <clears throat> you know, and that's just a personal, <clears throat> that's just a personal journey for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Truth be told, if cannabis, if, if my job wasn't so cannabis adjacent right now, if I was as like swimming, freelancing, doing comedy, I didn't know what direction I was going like two, three years ago, I might be taking a little bit of a tolerance break right now. Me and Scott talked about that. He gave me a reverse intervention. I was like, I was like, I'm thinking about taking like a couple weeks off. He's like, ah, it's crazy. Why would you do that? No. <laughs> Thankfully he did because <clears throat> weed's giving me everything, man. You know what I love about hanging out with, with the jug crew, especially all the dude grows guys are all the same way, but you know, I get to meet so many people throughout the, the jug dealers and the five, eight guys is that you get this army of people. I thought it was just me. I was the weirdo where I was like, dude, weeds like changed my life. Weeds given me everything. And then everyone's like, you're crazy. You should like get off that dope. But to be in a group of people that all are like, dude, the plants given me everything since I was 12. And it's just like I mean, normal. I, yeah, I, I definitely am in that camp of, I owe my entire life. Uh, you know, most, so for, for those of you who've been to Denver or know anything about Denver, and you know, and I discussed this on the Peabody episode, as far as like, you know, the Grateful Dead's kind of influence on moving pretty vast amounts of cannabis around the country. And, um, yeah. and there was, you know, there's a bar here in Denver. Uh, uh, there was a bar, a group of bars here in Denver called uh, Coyotes, Sancho's Broken Arrow, which was basically a fixture on Colfax um, for years, which if you know anything about Denver, you know, Colfax is the main street that in every city in America. You know, you know what I, I say mean? it's the Holy Trinity. You got you got you got Colfax and Broadway. It's yeah, the fucking, it's the sign of Denver. But if you've lived anywhere, you know, if you have Broadway in New York City or Broad Street in Philly or any big street in any major Sunset Boulevard in L.A., Michigan uh, Avenue, in Chicago, it, it's 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 that street, you know, to put it in perspective and whatever your big city is, you know what I mean? And so yeah. there was a Grateful Dead bar <clears throat> uh, called Sancho's and. um not legally. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, a, a lot of people I know uh, came out of that bar are very, very successful in the cannabis industry. Greg Gamet, Bickle. Um, you know, there's so many other folks that have got uh, Jeremy Krause. There's so many dudes that have come through those bars. <laughs> um, <clears throat> genetics, you know, same as Way to Grow here in Denver. Way to Grow, you know, between Dude. Jet and the guys that work there. Yeah. So many yeah. genetics came through. You know, I got I got cookies, uh, Super Silver Sour Diesel Haze, um, Headband. So many different genetics that I actually brought into Metric in 2012, 2013 in Colorado. Colorado. So like, Dude, you just saying Headband, like, flashes me. Like, when Headband came out, like, my whole life changed. Like, things were different after I smoked my first Headband. It's like, this is good weed, man. Well, and there's this two Headbands. There's, like, the regular Headband, and then there's the 707. Okay. And, like, the 707 is, like, <clears throat> the regular Headband is more like a sour diesel. You know what I mean? It right. smells different. Yeah, yeah got, and I love that that classic. It's got, it's got a. I'm trying to think of the word. It's not. It's not quite as. It's not quite as gassy. It's a little more floral. But then, yeah. um, <clears throat> we used to almost maybe what you're thinking of. We used to always call it like soil, like how you get like yeah. I'm from Iowa, so that you'd find that black soil. Like, I'll tell you what. There's almost like a little bit of a pininess to it. 
you know, on top bit. of the fuel. It was like more of a com- more of a complexity. And then, yeah, that 707 is fire, dude. <clears throat> 707. I wonder if I've had the 707. It leans more towards the OG. I actually had it once from California. These guys had done it veganic. And um, and it was uh, it had purple, purple hairs on it, purple hairs. Purple, you know, hairs. yeah, it was really unique looking. Some, I mean, it's one of those buds. I want to say 2014. I smoked that. Like, <clears throat> I'm like, I, you know, I'm like the same way with some weed. I, I'm the same way with weed that you would be like about like girls or cars or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, I drove a, I drove a Ferrari F430 once, but like I could tell you pretty vividly about the experience and like. There's certain buds I've smoked over time. What's that? Little edibles, fucking yeah. little hundred yeah, hundred certain milligrams buds I've going smoked down. over time. I'll be honest with you. Um, Phil Gist, Phil Gist out of a cut above, used to have a headband I ninety five that he won. Mm. He won like maybe the rooster in like twenty fifteen with it for live resin. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Um, yeah, I-95 is one of the strains that, like, I think I've only smoked it once, yet every single strain that I love, one of its parents is I-95. So I, yeah, I-95 I mean, I mean, I mean, is, like, real, like, swampy. It smells like an East Coast stream. You know what's really funny? Okay. You know what's really funny? Uh, in Pennsylvania... <clears throat> There, we used to have a strain called, uh, when I worked in Maryland, we had a strain called 9A95, uh, bred by, uh, bred by Tierra Rojo. And, um, in Pennsylvania, exit 9A on I-95 is route 420. Okay. I'll take a picture of it for you sometime. It wasn't it wasn't planned in any way, shape, or form. But I was driving up there one day and I noticed. And yeah, exit nine A on Interstate ninety five is Route four twenty. Hmm. <laughs> and can those signs exist? Like I'm sure you're, yeah, you're well aware I, of the the, the four nineteen point nine. I have in Colorado. I have, no, it's, it's it's one of the it's one of the overhead signs. So it's uh, one of the overhead signs on the interstate. So uh, I'll, I'll, oh, because it's it's not a mile marker, right? Yeah, yeah, it's dude, a high. I'll right? dig yeah. out. I'll dig through my photos because I've taken a photo of it. In which mm-hmm. that nine eight, yeah, for nine people five, that don't know, people that don't know that story, the the every four twenty mile marker in Colorado kept getting stolen. So a lot of them have been changed to four nineteen point nine. Yeah, <laughs> that was Hilarious. a big thing. I mean, here's the thing: there's not many states that are four hundred twenty miles wide. That's fascinating. You know, I think it's like Montana, Colorado, Kansas, maybe Nebraska. Is that a thing? Am I finding that out right now? Like, yeah, I don't chat. Can, can we North, can we fact North, check Gabe on this one? Is Colorado four hundred twenty miles wide? It's actually wider than that. I think it's like four thirty-five or something like that. All right. Because <clears throat> I'm sure there's you, a region. For every state in the country, as you go across them, they count down, they count backwards. And then mm. you know that, like, all the odd numbers run north and south, and all the even numbers run east to west. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that till a couple of years ago, but yeah, I finally understand how the internet's it's like the lower numbers mm-hmm. are like north south, and then the, yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, it, there's the a method to the madness. Who knew the interstate interstate tens at the bottom of the country, interstate nineties yeah. at the top of the country. And so ten would be an, an east west at the bottom, right? Yes. There's very few of them though that go fully across the country. Mm. Um, like I-90 only goes from like Chicago to Seattle. I think, I think 80 is one of them, but interstate 70 ends in Utah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go all the way. It could hooks up with 15 and then it goes out to Los Angeles. 
And isn't isn't Colfax Interstate 70? Technically? Yeah, Colfax yeah. is Colfax is 40. 40 is actually going back to what I was saying earlier. 40 is actually Broad Street in Philly as well. So if you were to take mm. it all the way across the country, you know, they, they joke about Route 66, but Route 66 was really the original uh, trans transcontinental highway for a lot of people. You know, that's why Route 66 is so famous. But yeah, Interstate yeah. 40, Interstate 40 was Col was Colfax. If you so if you were to dig <clears throat> If you were to dig further into it, you notice that not well, when I say interstate, that's what I was about to say. So uh, if you notice all those signs have that shield, like like 40 will have a shield around it. That means yeah. that it's like that means that it's a federal federal road. If you'll notice like state roads, like if you go out to Utah, all the all the state roads have like the beehive. Like they'll have a beehive and then they'll have whatever. And when it comes down to state roads, each each state has its own symbols. I'll be honest with you, I can't remember can't remember what it is here in Colorado. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But like PA Yeah, for people that don't know, even even guys that watch the show, I don't think that they quite understand how much you guys travel. You guys are fucking road dogs. The jug dealers, like you because we'll do shout outs, like, hey, if you're in California, we're coming to your neighborhood. But like that's these guys' lives, dude. Gabe and Jaron are on the road, like, probably, like, what, like, 100 days? 80, 90? At something least, like that. At Seems least, like you're on, at least 60. And then, not for nothing, man, just being a kid on fish tour and all the rest of that happy nonsense. Like, I have, <clears throat> I have five states left to go uh, to, ta to, ta to have the entire United States under my belt. And two of them are, like, Alaska and Hawaii. <laughs> I just need to get on the uh, continental. I just need to get to Alabama, Texas, and South Dakota. The, when I was on the road, right before I got hooked up with the Dude Grows guys, I went out and I did like six weeks on the road doing comedy. And the guy that I was uh, opening for, his name is PJ Johnson. His legal name on his ID, like, this is a Detroit kid, you know, raised by like uh, questionable parents. And uh, his name is Papa Junior Joseph Papa Johnson. That's his legal name on his ID. Papa, Papa Jr., Joseph Papa Johnson. And this motherfucker, as a headliner, his goal as he was touring was to get a lap dance in all 50 states. And I was with him for like 11 through 24 or some ridiculous shit. God like bless that. him. Yeah. God I, bless I wonder him. how he's, that was like a year and a half ago. He's got to be getting up there. But it's always, that's the last two Alaska and Hawaii. It's like, good luck getting Hawaii, kid. I'm trying to get to Hawaii later this year, to be honest. And if you book your flights out early enough, they're actually pretty reasonable. So I'm going to try and actually do it on points. Ooh. See, Gabe's that kind of baller. <laughs> get a flight on points sort of baller. But I also don't envy that. It's like, dude, when we went to Vegas on the way home from Vegas, from M uh, MJ BizCon, dude, that was a nightmare. I, I was like, I don't envy you guys. I'm used to it at this point. Like you just roll with a carry on and don't, you know, just don't pack heavy. That's the biggest thing. <laughs> so what are you dabbing on? Fucking, uh, I got well, dabbing I on a, something crazy. I got a bunch of stuff. I got this, uh, I got this siege and sour. All right. That stuff was really delicious. Alone. That's a, this is a great shot. This is like Kubrickian. <laughs> Yeah, Gabe's always got. I always have these little fucking pussy containers of dabs. <laughs> Gabe travels around with like baby food jars full of fucking the best live resin on earth. Yeah, live resin, not to be confused with that rosin nonsense. <laughs> See, I am agnostic. I, I love both a hundred percent. I, I, I apolitical. I, I just like I just like poking the bear. I just like poking the bear. No, I like it. I like, I like it. Like I, I said, like I, I've hung out with a lot of rosin heads and I've hung out with a lot of BHO heads. And the rosin people are, are usually the smell your own farts sort of vibe. And the BHO people, they're that's, people. That's why I give so much crap. I still got to do. It's funny because I posted today, uh, today, tomorrow. Tomorrow is the seventh anniversary of the Clementine Challenge. 
Oh, and, yeah. When you want to explain to everyone what that was? Yeah. Uh, so and, for uh, anybody listening, you know, basically what I did <clears throat> was, um, you know, if, if for anybody who doesn't know who I am or whatever I've done, um, you know, I've been cultivating for like 28 years. But I had a really big harvest that I had intended to enter in the Cannabis Cup that year. And the Cannabis Cup in 2017 got canceled. So I had, I ended up having, I think, like 20 plus thousand grams of fresh frozen <laughs> material. You know, as you do, 20,000. And I was like, give or what take. the fuck am I going to do with all this stuff? Like, how am I going to? So I dreamt up, uh, I dreamt up a challenge in which, so to back it up even more, um, the year before I won, I got second place in the Cannabis Cup for uh glaze live resin which was tom hills haze times gorilla glue and i had it's it, you know i grew more of it throughout the year and throughout the year i had given it to someone to process and noticed that the flavor from the from the glaze had dragged over to some other genetics you know mainly because what I cut, what I came to learn later is that they didn't filter the butane after the run, and then hazes really they drag that flavor in the butane. You know they'll carry that flavor in the butane. So if you were to blast an OG, if you sorry, if you were to blast a haze, and then you were to blast an OG after it, and you didn't filter that butane, and when I say filter the butane, what you end up doing is you basically end up doing a dry run. You end up doing a run. You know, for people who complain about rosin and, and they say, oh, BHO's got the butane in it, um, you recapture most of that. You recapture like 98% of that fucking butane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, the, and the rest of the butane, to be honest with you, is left in the material. You know what I mean? So um, I had had someone give me a run where one of my OGs tasted like haze. And I was like, well, this is fucked up. And so I dreamt up. Well, you know, basically like, you know, especially at the time there was the term, you know, the the term extract artist was getting thrown around a lot, you know? And I was like, dude, I was like, like, there's no art form to it. You know, you're turning some dials, you're frigging, you're, you're. You're reading your SOPs, letting it soak for eight minutes at minus 30 degrees and then, you know, purging the column. Well, what I learned was, you know, I gave 2000 grams to each. I I found six different extraction companies and I said, hey, if I give you guys 2000 grams a piece, would you be willing to enter this competition? You know, and what I did was I, I kind of built a little a criteria of my own where I judge people on overall yield. Um, we actually took uh, the live flower and we tested it because in my mind, live resin by definition, sh- the profile should line up. Cl- well, my original assumption was that because it was a concentrate that it would be a ratio of the flower. You know, if it was, uh, if the flower had X, Y, and Z terpenes, uh, the concentrate would presumably have the same terpenes concentrated levels. You know what I mean? So you, it would be nine times in equal ratios. You know what I'm saying? So their hypothesis, it was, that was my hypothesis in which we learned something. And the thing that we learned is it does not concentrate. You can actually get it where it lines up like the, uh, so disappointing fact to most people who, especially, um, you know, the BHO guys, uh, we allowed Evo lab. So the, 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 the six competitors were green dot CRX CSC incredibles harmony and Evo lab. So five of those being BHO companies, Evo Lab is a CO2 company. Now, we took the live flower, we sent it to the lab, we had it tested. Much to everybody's chagrin, the one that was closest to the flower was, you want to take a guess, Grambo? 
Uh, I know it sure as shit wasn't the CO2, right? <laughs> Please don't tell me it was the CO2. Wrong a Rooney, son. Oh, my God. What's up, Cortez? Wrong a Rooney. Yo. So the CO, the CO2 was the closest to the actual live flower. Now, like in like, testing, in testing, not... in testing. Okay. Now that being said, it brought back the smallest yield, I think fifty-two grams. In which then that then limited me to the amount of flights that I could put out because I could only put out. So what we did was we sold into we sold. We ended up selling 100 flights because we were limited with the 52 grams. We gave half gram samples. We anonymized it. So we had one through six numbers, one through six, so that no one could. I didn't want people looking at the lids, seeing that like one was Harmony or one was whoever and voting for that. You know, so I tried to make it if we per the law, we had to have the license numbers on the back of the labels so if you really wanted to you could have gone into metric and looked up oh the, so this was this was above the board on top of yeah, it huh yeah we were we were doing yeah, for, for once again because we got people from all over not just the country but the world uk like everyone that's in the chat right now and uh so this speaks to gabe when i say gabe knows everyone gabe's like oh i'll go get a few uh extract people you know crx green dot harmony <laughs> it's like i know crx isn't around anymore but they were like one of my favorite like back in the day and they, they're, they, uh, they were and not not only was there, CRX. Uh, CRX is now the uh, uh, the gold tips. Who, who you're thinking? Of, you're, I think you're thinking of CSC. I th I'm pretty sure CRX is probably still around. That's because that's, that's they got they got sold, and I think they changed their name. Possibly. Uh, I, I think they're are they Natty Rams? Is that CRX was Natty, Natty Rams? Rams. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah, Natty yeah. 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 So, and so then, now and, they're fully Natty Rams now. And not for nothing, that was actually Bill who ran that round. Like I watched him run that round. Um, but it was, you know, the, 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 the CO2 was the closest to the actual flower. The next one that was closest now understand they had 52 grams, the winners, you know, I, let me, I'll hold off on the winners for people. The, the one that actually there was, was controversy. Well, there was the controversy. One, there is the one that was actually closest in the BHO category to the live flower was Incredibles. And Incredibles had a lot of experience with running. And had they launched their extract company? I oh, know. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. They were rocking and rolling. They were running the Because they were edibles factors. only in Colorado for yeah, a long time. Sure. And then when I'm they came sure out with their you. extracts, they came out swinging. Their black label was fire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Telly ran that run. And not for nothing, um, they had good experience with the orange soda. You know what I mean? So they, they were they they were extracting oranges already. You know, in which mm. <clears throat> that one, not only was it the closest BHO extract to the flower, but their yield was somewhere. I mean, it's been seven years, but I know their their yield was north of one ten. I think it might have almost been one twenty. So understand, they got almost double the yield of the winners. And I'll tell you who the winners were in a second. And <laughs> again, but the worst part about those guys was they ended up getting disqualified because there were fibers in their hash. Fibers. They went they went and cleaned they went and cleaned the jars before the competition and they did it with like a, a linen like a terry cloth towel and uh okay. And it, they, they got little fibers in it. So they ended up getting DQ'd. Uh, Nick oh, Mailman wow. kind of called him out on that. And I said, hey, I, I, you know, there's nothing I can do. Uh, Green Dot was pretty close to the flower. Uh, CRX was pretty close to the flower. Those guys both had north of 110 grams. Uh, CSC, I think, was north of 100. And then the winners was Harmony Extracts. And Harmony came in with 56. That was also the first time anyone had publicly seen diamonds. So I'm uh, not. I'm... Uh oh. Did we lose uh, Gabe? Uh, no, 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 no. You, 
Eugene was trying to chime in. Or oh, Eugene was calling me. Um, Tell him to come saying, on. That's on I'm, I'm not saying that no one had made diamonds before that. I'm saying that in a public legal market, no one had seen diamonds. You know, that was a completely new thing. Uh, and the fact that they were bringing diamonds and sauce to the table. Now, ironically enough, funny story about um, Evo Lab was, so for those of you who don't know about CO2, um, interesting process, you know, it's the, at this point, like with all these processes, and this is why I kind of, this is why I give Rosin so much crap. You know what I mean? Because the processes that you're running um, are completely different. I understand like for the small craft guy, the guy with a little spot, dude, running BHO, you got to understand chemistry. It You're run, you're basically running a fucking bomb. Like it's, it, you know, you got to, <laughs> there's a lot that goes into it. And I get, I get, I'm not asking people to do it at home. That's not what I'm asking people to do. But I just want people to understand that between the two processes with BHO, you're running at temperatures anywhere between like minus 40 and minus 80, you know? So like, those are super, those are super critical, subcritical temperatures in which that's going to be the best way to preserve your turps. You know what I mean? When you put it in an oven, you know, you're maybe putting it, you know, I know a lot of guys who will put it, we're going to give you some tech here real quick, but I know a lot of guys that'll put it in like 115 to 120. They'll get it. They'll get it hot real quick. And then they'll put it under vac and basically just suck off any of the rest of that butane. But in places like, um, in places like uh, Massachusetts and stuff, um, enjoy that dab, bro. <laughs> in places like you're, Massachusetts you're inspiring stuff, a revolution, Gabe. That's right. In the BHO like revolution, we're taking it back. <laughs> in places like Massachusetts, the the it's a zero parts per million threshold on BHO. So I mean, yeah. I there you go. After after the show, I had to uh, I had to go support our boy. I was at the. It's one of those things where I I wanted to like brag that my bud tender was telling me it's like oh dude harmony's so good i had literally just come like, from like interviewing the owner of the fucking you're like i just had know? jeremy johnson on the show bro yeah no i, I just buckled i just zipped my lip i i hate being that guy or it's like check your weed privilege as we like to say jeremy's jeremy's one of the better dudes for sure but that's like one of the biggest things for me is the fact that like and when you're when you're when you're making rosin, you're at 160 to 180 degrees in the press. And then, you know, if you're adding, let's say, four tons of pressure, pressure creates friction, friction creates heat. So both of those things, you're already at a higher temperature. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just trying to drop some science. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not saying <laughs> no, people no. shouldn't this like is, it. I, this is a debate. So I'm sitting here. I'm smoking several kinds of rosin. You know, I got one BHO sitting here. And I fully support a conversation about a little bit of rosin hate because there is this misnomer, man. Like when I found out about all the particulate bug horseshit uh bacteria all, dude, all possible, uh, fibers dude, possible plastics like microplastics and stuff oh like uh, yeah dude the the nylons like right from your fucking bags like mm -hmm. so so yeah when all I started that, actually all that stuff. researching it believe you me i was shocked to find it's like not only could you make the case bho is cleaner you can make the case it's much cleaner well much, and that's much, my much you know it's, again my whole argument with people is just pick different adjectives. You know what I mean? Like, but, but cleaner, cleaner right. is not the adjective. Like we, you know, right. pick, just say, just say, Hey, I like it better. I, th I think that this is a superior product. That's fine. I don't really give a shit. Like you're entitled to your opinion, but you coming at me and saying it's cleaner. I'm going to tell you nine different ways. It's not cleaner. <laughs> You what know? do you think about this? You're probably in a unique uh, 
the position to answer this. I've always wondered because like I'm a hardcore concentrate guy, you know, and, and, uh, and living in Denver, I, I buy a couple grams a week, every week for a decade. And I've noticed you could blind taste test me. And I could, if you could give me like, you know, GMO to GMO, strain to strain, I can taste green dot. It, it has a flavor. Harmony has a flavor. They taste so, like the strains, but then within that, it's got its own flavor. Like, what do you think about so, that? What is so that? Harmony, what am I, I know harmony. Why does it taste different? So I know Harmony uses a butane propane blend, like an 80-20 blend. Okay. And propane yeah, a lot of people are doing that, right? Propane likes to uh really likes the terpene beta carathylene. So um it's just gonna strip beta carathylene um way more efficiently. You, you know, you know what I mean? Um the other thing is definitely what temperature they run at. So if, uh, if a lab runs at like a colder temperature, like let's say minus, so most labs are going to run at minus 40 ish, you know what I mean? And that's a great number. You're going to get pretty much everything you, everything you want and need out of that. You start going below that you get into the minus 60, 70, 80, you're going to pull less yield, but it's going to be, how'd you like that? Oh, it, it surprised me. Ooh. Yeah, you're going to pull less yield, but you're going to have less contaminant in there as well. Like you're really going to be focused in and you're going to have just certain terpenes that don't come through at that temperature, you know? Yes, heating the product is degradation, but at that temperature, it's so low, you know, like one, you know, we're talking 120 max. <laughs> you're doing it for a very short period of time. Any rosin that you see, and yes, you're right, heating it is degradation, in which rosin, they're pressing 160, 180. And then, like I said, if you add in the plates, which are running, let's say, at four tons, they're going to create pressure, which creates friction, which creates heat. So, you know, you're doubling down on that heat. And yes, it is. It's going to degrade. It's going to carboxylate the uh, cannabinoids, but then it's also going to degrade certain terpenes. Yeah, rosin definitely. Sometimes, even with the best rosin, even even with the best, 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 best stuff, like I'll taste. Uh, I don't know if I'm like scarred. Like sometimes, I'll, like uh, when I'll drink orange juice, even if there's no vodka in it, I'll kind of taste vodka. You know, because I drank so many fucking screwdrivers back in the day. Sometimes when I hit rosin, I taste the hair straightener, burnt popcorny. I don't, well, I don't I really can get, you know, I'll be honest it. with you. I don't really get that nowadays. The biggest problem I have with it is I find a lot of times that the I flavor, smoking rosin now. the flavor does not match the taste, the, the smell. Like I find a lot of times they smell louder than they taste, you know, and that, and, and don't get me wrong. I find ones, you know, the press club is a perfect example. Um, he has a pre 98 S one. That is one that's his, he knows it incredibly well. You know, he literally, you know, I say to people, um, he has an intimate relationship with the plant. You can just tell by the hash, but his lines up pretty well. But I think, um, I think a lot of people just make rosin because it's worth money. And as long as it's creamy and it's kind of a nice color, like, and, and it smells loud, like people will, will hang with that. But for right. me, yeah, I think sometimes, a- sometimes I end up preaching be- because I get so like, I only smoke the best of the best. And if I try something and it sucks, I don't fuck with it anymore, you know? So I end up forgetting, like I do, I, I, gambled i never gamble i always go with like what i know and you know i gambled on this really expensive rosin the bud tender was hyping it up i'd never tried it it looked the part it smelled the part i was like all right and literally it's sitting up there i'm chain smoking this laser cat i'm chain smoking this taking tops dirty taxi this fucking other shit that will remain nameless that was very expensive top shelf the little foil wrapping the whole nine what genetic is it what is it gmo yeah, yeah. So it, really? it should be fucking. Yeah, the, it should be screaming, but it's it's boof. Oh wow! How do you fuck that one up? 
it's and it's beautiful it looks like a beautiful little dollop of creamy candy and less no chirps sorry oh man i i have is it a little ball yeah 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 they're all I, they all come in those little dollops Boop. oh i i think i know who it is i'm not gonna shout them out but yeah, maybe they're up here they even have like this 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 fugazi wood paneling on their stuff Man, get out of here fugazi i mean so i mean but that it's funny because if you talk if you know you you really think about it like that was um like if you went to bizcon you know this year the packaging hall was bigger than the growing hall yeah and like you well just, that goes like to speak you, to something i would say friends that with money would always call me when i moved to colorado and they're like hey man when iowa starts popping off i want to get in it what should i know and i was like get into the packaging side like exit bags little blocky things zip locks and paper like when you get a gram of bho in here it comes in a thing that's inside of a thing that's inside of a thing it, the it's, best it's weed ridiculous. The best weed comes in sandwich bags, bro. I'm just not, saying. You're not wrong. You're I'm just saying. Wrong. The best weed comes there in sandwich still, bags. There's still I dispensaries gotta... that sell weed in fucking over in Lakewood. My buddy's favorite dispensary. It's an old, tiny, old people thing, and they still put it in little Ziplocs. Little, like the little, you know, two finger fucking. <laughs> They'll put eighths and quarters in yeah. those things. Like that's how I put the fucking sticker on it. Yeah, you know, that's how we bought weed for years and sold it. Exactly, man. Fuck yeah, dude. Well, yeah, there's no format to this shit. I literally sit here. I put my kid to bed at seven, and then you know, I was like, I literally have the ability to fucking click the live button and just go live. So yeah, fucking, I don't know if you're uh, you look like you're fucking crashing out over there. No, my eyes are always closed like this. <laughs> I think it's funny. Fuck I was yeah. telling a, I was telling a story tonight, like a, a childhood memory. I, I don't really remember it that well, but, um, when I was, when I was eight years old, um, I sprayed gasoline in my eyes, mm. like a pretty, a pretty decent amount of gasoline in my eyes. And if you look at like any picture of me, like I'm always squinting, you know, like my <laughs> eyes are just always, you know, and it's just like, it's like this whole thing for me. So it, it I always look like I'm about to pass the fuck out, you know, have fucking these ant things. Let's see if I had one sitting here. Literally, it's like ant poison. I saw some ants, and so it's like a little ant trap thing. And this is yep. like three days ago. And I go to open the fucking thing, and it just like flicks ant poison in my fucking eyeball. And so for like the as you're saying that, I'm looking at myself in the camera. It's like, all right, I'm still beautiful. Well, okay. nowadays you're always beautiful, you know. Nowadays I need the glasses. Like I tell, like I tell Jair every time we're on the road, I'm like, bro, your lights ruined my eyes. You know, <laughs> right? I, well, did you wear know, did you wear the protective lenses game? Did you wear the protective lenses? No, I wore them on my head a lot. Like I would wear them up. You know, I'd wear them like this all the time. Yeah. You know, but that doesn't help. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. So when I ran commercial facilities, every week I would have a safety meeting. I would have some type of meeting with my entire team. You should an actual safety meeting, not just a fucking safety. No, 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 no. Like real, you know, we're talking corporate cannabis, man. I work for a big ass, you know, 55,000 square foot building. So like you got to. Yeah. You got to do that stuff. But I would. Uh, no, I did my time in corporate cannabis. You got to you got to do what you got to do. But I would do uh, I would do safety meetings with my team. And I basically uh, I would make them. We go over eye protection. Whenever and whenever I'd hire new someone, we go over eye protection. I would give each team member a pair of glasses. Like I'd give them to them with the method sevens in which, dude, at the time, those method sevens were like 50 bucks a pair. Like they were not cheap. Um, yeah, yeah. Those and good I'd glasses give, are expensive. I'd, I'd give everybody a pair of glasses 
and I'd be like, you get a fresh pair every year. You know, that way, if you scratch them up, you get a new pair at the end of the year. But I'd always, and if, and if I walked in, if I walked into a room and you weren't wearing them though, I'd bust your ass, you know, I'd be like, Hey, why aren't you wearing these? Cause dude, they will, they will cook your eyes. I won't be surprised. Nope. I won't be surprised if in another 10, 15 years, there's like a bunch of growers who are like half effing blind, you know? Right. Class action. <laughs> you know, it's a little too late for that, but it's definitely something I see in the future, sticking yourself in super mega bright rooms for hours at a time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, on the whole subject of, of the corporate cannabis, people get people get bent out of shape about it. And I understand, like, the whole, like, why, like, yeah, fuck that shit. But you know what Culver's is? You know what Culver's restaurant is? The burger place? It's, like, it's cheap. It's really, really good. It's, you know, relatively fast. You got to sit there for a split second, you know. And I'm sitting there one day over in North Glen. And I'm sitting in a, a Culver's parking lot. And there's no one in the drive-thru. There's no one inside. I'm literally the only car there. It's done, like, instantly. I get this bomb-ass food. And right across the street, I see a McDonald's with cars just wrapped around the block. Literally, catty corner to this empty Culver's. And it hit me. It's not just that, like, people make crappy things and then people buy it no 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 it's the other way around there's a market they want shit yeah they want it's if they had the option of a shit mcdonald's burger or the culver's burger they take the mcdonald's they want it so some people want bad weed they don't but want good weed they don't want but it but it's like i it's like i say about land was my mind it's like i say about lamborghini and ferrari and rolls royce they don't advertise for a reason. They don't have to. And, and yes. you know, and Jaron and I say it all the time, you know, like, look, man, not everybody's your customer. You know, I yes. don't, and, and, and not for nothing, I don't need everyone to be my customer, you know? No. No, the, the definition of wealthy is put to me once was the money you turn down tastes as good as the money you accept. You know, it's like, oh, no, 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 that's not for me. I'm not doing that. The that's biggest when thing you I, feel wealthy. Well, and the biggest thing I try to impress upon people, um, you know, when I'm consulting is, <laughs> is oh, that like, birds, son. like, don't grow, don't grow so much that you have a surplus. Like sell out, run out of weed. You 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 know what I mean? Like run out of fucking weed. That's oh, yeah. that's the position you want to be in, dude. Like I I, I hit this. Uh, at, we we're talking with. Uh, I, I opened up this stream by talking about how we got to hang out with Peabud and fucking one of my favorite strains ever is Chem Four. And so weirdly enough, I get this shit called Zuffy. It's banana puffy times Skittles. And I would have never expected in a billion years of those two things to combine. But, dude, I'm getting Chem 4 notes off of this. Uh, like, And so, like, I looked up immediately, like, there was a drop this week. This shit's going to be gone soon, and I got to go yeah. get it, or else it's gone forever. And I might not ever see Zuffy ever again. You know, that's how Terrible. the good weed works in Denver. It's drops culture, man. You get it or you don't. Terrible name. I know Zuffy. Who, who yeah. is, who's it from? I, I, uh, Laser Cat. <laughs> Laser Cat. <laughs> they're a great company that, like, if you wanted to pick on rosin, they're such a perfect company. First of all, they make the best rosin maybe on earth. I think I, I would vote them as maybe the best rosin company on earth. That being said, they include their uh, how they make their rosin inside of every box. And they have special hippie crystals, like magic crystals. That they use to like help wa when they're washing the, their hash, they wash it with ice water and it crystals, energy infused crystals that power the the hash. So you could tease the fuck out of Laser Cat, but whatever they're doing, dude, it works. It's the bomb. What's a gram of hash cost? Um, on the med side, like I think I, this stuff was thirty five out the door. 
you'll have to you'll have to bring some down. I'll be the judge of. Uh, I'll be the judge of. We had to bring... email Puffco. My Puffco fucking it wasn't the heating element. I got a new heating element, and it wasn't the fucking heating element. The goddamn base just de- died piece of crap so i had to email him i try to tell him hey really? i'm josh grambo from the jug dealers they didn't care i was like let's check your warranty. they generally don't nah, you but bastards. you know there's a warranty on those things mine uh yeah i've had mine i'm having some issues with it right now but i've had mine i want to say four years yeah well, i'm hoping and after I, this one i still gotta check yeah, Rev knows. Rev, those are both great companies, especially 710. Although I got some garlic cocktail uh, after smoking Jaren's garlic cocktail all the time that he, he's always bringing in. I was like, ooh, 710 Labs fucking ran some garlic cocktail. Wasn't that good? I don't know. It depends. Hey, here's you Thomas know, Cooley what... keeping it real with his flower vape. Shout out, Thomas, keeping it real. Uh, B B's garlic cocktail is way more garlic and less mimosa, and I yeah. prefer that expression over I mean, um don't we all? over the the heavy orange. The Clint, you know, stepping back to the Clementine challenge, it kind of ruined me on the orange stuff. Really? Yeah, I wasn't so much. And then the second round we did of the Clementine challenge, so we changed. As we progressed, we called it the Terp Trials because we were changing yeah. genetics. And the next round we did was what I got from the Grow Off team, which was Race Fuel. And that was a good one, too. <coughs> I want to do it again. I was confused. And... Those, those in motor breath, they always like have the fucking same fucking shit. Right. I want to do it again where I do three rosin companies and three live resin companies. It's becoming like a, a tradition for all the dude grows guys. When we shout out Dynavap to show our unused Dynavaps that we like, like me and Banner both fucking at, at the bakery. We just dab fucking like, I don't know, man. The idea of sparking up my fucking Dynavap. I don't know. I want to. Is that a cart? No, you never heard of the Dynavap. It's kind of a weird name. So it's uh-huh. a, a dry herb vapor. Uh, like, so it's got like this unique like mouthpiece that you kind of torch and it's a dry, dry herb vaping. It, it, you know, it, it's really good. I've I've hit them many times, but the one that I was gifted, I haven't opened yet. It's kind of a souvenir. Maybe I'll give it away one of these days. Although I have agoraphobia these days. I don't leave the house unless it's for work. So like anybody that's like buys things from me, it's like, oh, like I did a seed giveaway for some night owl seeds and the Shawnee Mac grow one. And I'm just dreading it. It's like, dude, I shouldn't have gave this away. Now I have to like leave the house. And go to the post office. Fuck. Just do it on the way to work, bro. Uh, I'm thinking about hiring an assistant. If anybody out there in Denver wants to fucking work for me for weed and a few hundred dollars, please apply. Because I need a fucking assistant. I don't. Have, I don't make enough money to have an assistant. I need a fucking assistant, dude. I can't believe you don't. I have always try to turn. Well, I mean, of course I have my AI bullshit, but I always try to turn the girls I'm dating into my assistants and then it goes great until we break up and then I'm lost. I gotta stop you, doing then, that. Yeah. Then you, and then yeah. hopefully they got some shit done, but if they didn't, then you're really fucked. Oh yeah. This last girl I was dating fucking, she was great. She got me halfway through like a dozen projects and now I'm, that's where, you know, that's where they shall be. I opened a business account a business banking account and i think they closed it because i never fucking deposited any money she said she was gonna do it if you don't show up for court can you blame your ex my bitch ex was supposed to remind me she didn't. maybe blame it on your assistant on that one who is my bitch ex god damn it 
Yeah, I just gotta fucking pay someone to be my assistant. I just gotta, do, I just gotta drop the money. Cause I, there's so many things I want to do. Like there's, I do all the, like the the weird cannabis stuff. It's like, well, I'm also a stand up comedian. I'm also a musician. I also want to start a few like businessy type things. I want to travel a little bit more. Like, you know, I told fucking uh, Jaron after he got back from Spain, I was like, uh, like he's going somewhere. Like, what's the next cool thing that's going on? I can't remember. Like, South some... Africa. No, so, uh, that, I mean that's cool, but there's like some like cannabis event isn't there like a, a cuppy type thing going on somewhere i know i mean i know he's going to that river party in uh the ozarks or something like that yeah it's a, one of those things i, I was just i was joke it's like the, the fucking cub reporter josh grambo should be on the scene i gotta get more yeah, serious about that must be nice Cause I I could tell you traveling with the jug dealers is a is a thing to behold. You better be fucking ready if you want to hang with the jug dealers. Cause these boys go hard. I had a blast in Vegas. I know everyone goes hard in Vegas, but you guys go hard in Vegas. I'm always, dude. I'm always uh, busting out the dab rig at the booth and getting people ripped on some pretty intense live resin. Yeah, we took a dab at the. Most expensive, like sushi restaurant in Vegas, yeah, that, and there that was pretty <laughs> funny. We were sitting at dinner doing dabs. <laughs> Gabe's got the most expensive sake and the best live resin. He's just fucking. <laughs> uh, that was that fun. Was, I was glad to hang out. I, you know, it's funny because uh, I hate to say that's pretty normal, but like that's not outside the realm of shit that just happens, you know. No, nah, dude. No, nah, I was unprepared. I will not be unprepared the next time that we roll out in force. I will be fucking, I will be hydrated, wearing the right shoes. Next time fucking. I tell you I'm going to get you into Steve Aoki's birthday, just believe me and show up. Uh, uh, see, here's the here's the thing about other uh, cannabis streamers out there, y'all. They a lot of people like to whitewash their lives and only tell you the good stuff. Let me tell you where I was. Wow, Gabe took us to the most expensive, hottest nightclub in the fucking city. Fucking like, obviously the fucking the the, the Danes took us, but you know you were taking me. And fucking, I I, I fell for a, a Tinder hooker. I fell for it. They pretend to be real girls, and they're like, yeah, let's hang out. And then right before you hang out, they're like, oh, you know, I'm working, right? And it's like, bitch, no, I didn't know you're working, and I just left a fucking. Fun ass party because I thought you, you were a hot electric. You had an idea. You had an idea because as you left, as you left dinner, you were like, "What do you think the chances are this girl's like a working girl?" And I was like, mm, "Yeah, it's a bit, probably good chance. Probably good chance." That shit never happens in Denver, Vegas. I'm. I get it. I'm the idiot. I get it. Oh, you know, bro, they all they all working girls out there. No offense to anybody. Hilarious. I don't know what I was thinking, but a boy can dream. Look, man, that's what that town is built on, and that's fine. <laughs> you know? Sand and dreams, and that's all I had was sand and dreams. You had some that sand. Was you, though. Were, you were pounding sand in your dreams at the end of the night. <laughs> oh. But that was so cool just to be able to hang out. Like for those of you guys that don't know Jair from fucking Gavita, now Dutch Lighting Innovations, like, like this is the guy, you know, and to be able to like sit in a hotel room in a suite and pick this guy's brain of like, he's Jair's telling me about the rough times. It's like the first time Gavita cashed in and he took all the money and doubled back down and put it all back in the company. He just lived broke for years Dude, those stories are so valuable. When you hear rich, you look at someone who's like, oh, this rich guy. Nah, son, it wasn't always like that. And let me tell you about the early days. Well, and as a grower, I mean, when I first heard about those fixtures and a non-ducted, open-ended, double-ended fixture, you're like, that was it. You were like, what the fuck is this? And then again, like, <laughs> I mean, so like, to put it in, so like to put it in perspective, you know, in 2010, 
when I was building one of the first when I was putting when I was building one of the first grows in Denver, we had two forty light rooms, which which were huge. Like people were like that was crazy. And we were running the Raptor hoods and they were the first Raptor hoods in the country. They were so new that they de- didn't even have a UL listing sticker on them. So we hung them and had to come back and put the UL listing sticker on them just to pass the fire inspection. <laughs> that's awesome. And then, and that's is it like just me big... or is fire inspections the bane of the cannabis industry? If there's yeah, one they... thing that's the Achilles heel, it's the fire department. Well, and I say that to people all the time because the fire department can basically make up their own rules. Like they can, they can just be like, "Hey, uh, we don't like this. We're making a rule," and then they'll just it's shut like you YouTube, down. It's like YouTube, but with consequences. <laughs> like there's simple shit too, and it all depends on where you're at. Like in Denver, in Denver, you can't have your lights on yo-yos. So, you know, the, you know, the string things, that, that ratcheting string thing, <laughs> you have to have a backup chain in case there's a fire. So that way uh, they don't, they don't fall when, if there's a fire. Right. Crazy shit. Crazy shit. So <laughs> they just do whatever they want. I, I don't know if they still have it in Denver. But for the longest time, there was just a uh, cannabis-related. Um, there you go, there you go. <laughs> I, that's what gonna... I was saying. Uh, when you'll find, like in the online kind of weed hipster community, that uh, everyone's using LED. What? You're a, a dinosaur if you're using HPS. But out in the hardcore heady world. Kind of shocked. A lot of HPS being used out there. Because they rock, bro. If you have the cooling, there's no reason not to, no reason not to use them. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I'm them. a CRI whore, so I I, I feel kind of got you know because I thought just the close, the higher the CRI, the better, baby. So I left HPS for ceramic metal halide, and then I left halide for LED, and now that we're getting all the data back that all those strains that were kind of cultivated underneath HPS kind of prefer HPS even to this day. Yep. Didn't see that coming. Yeah. And we've been saying that for a while, you know, but whatever the selection pressure was, you know, but OGs, sour D's, chem D's, they want that HPS gelatos, cakes, that kind of shit. What do you think they about like this? LED. I've I've either heard or theorized in my own stone brain about like VPD and like strains like the diesel, like loving, like, like it all came from like the East coast and shit. And I, I always, I theorized or heard someone speculate one time, maybe that like VPD is the reason that Colorado has no good diesel. Is there any validity to that? I mean, I think that's part of it. I mean, I think a lot of people, so for the longest time in Colorado, people felt, like the best way to combat powdery mildew was to um, was to uh, keep the humidity low, you know. And when you're keeping your humidity low, you're choking out your plants. Your stomata are way more closed. I got a funny story about Germany in a second, but uh, yeah, your stomata yeah. are closed. So yeah, your plants aren't breathing the way they would. I mean, I can tell you right now, if you go on my Instagram page, you know, the picture. And that's at G Money Love. This motherfucker needs to change his fucking (laughs) Instagram so you guys can fucking find him. But go follow G Money Love. I don't know how to spell it. G-M-Y and a bunch of shit. You'll find it. G G Money Love. G G It's just U's instead of O's. All right. It's got one. Dude, G Money Love has one of those ghost holders. Where it's like there's like three followers and like one post, and you're like, fuck, dude. Like, but yeah, spelled the right way. So that was my old for anybody who curious or is cares in any way, shape, or form. That was my old uh 
when we would take our, when I did construction and we would take our hard hats off at lunch, we'd all just like drop our hard hats. And so you had to mark your hard hat in some way that you would know it was yours. And so instead of writing my name in my hard hat, I would write a G and then I would write a dollar sign and then I would write love, you know, cause I, I didn't want it to be G money. Cause I didn't want people to think I was just obsessed with money. Right. And I didn't want it to be G love money. Cause then people would really think I'm obsessed with money. So that's why I put G money love. So, so you should be G dollar sign heart. That's the that one. That's that is technically when I sign things, like when I do shit, like on my hash, that is actually mm. what I put is a G, a dollar sign, and a heart. <laughs> Good man. Sign that's how I signed my divorce papers. G money love. Dude, I sign everything with a smiley face. I sign my divorce papers with the name Cockmaster Flex. That's fucking awesome. I wish I had thought of that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I sign Shout everything. out Cockma Cockmaster Flex. That is the flex right there. <laughs> ah, like... I, I'm riff. I'm riffing with you. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh... I my divorce papers. I'm sorry, and then the tears washed it away. You know, I, uh, I don't even. I can't even remember. I did divorce is such a pain in the ass process. It's like you know. Dude, I went in with no lawyer. Like I, I Jedi mind trick this shit. I walked in just like you won't hurt me. I know you. Oh, dude, I spent. I probably spent twenty k on a lawyer. <coughs> Yo, fucking New Zealand out there listening. Always blows my mind the international listeners, man. Shout out to y'all down there and fucking the other side of the goddamn earth. Dude, my best friend's talking about moving down to Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Jack. He works for uh he works for Caterpillar. Works with Caterpillar. I shouldn't say he works for Caterpillar, he works with Caterpillar. Good spot to be. But he's like, Yeah, dude, I'm thinking about moving well, down yeah, to dude. Australia. Fuck it, man. New <laughs> I know a lot of fucking people. A lot of people say, like, they're thinking about fucking leaving America, so, you know. Dude, it's tomorrow it's right there, now. right now, you know? <laughs> he lives in... Upside. You live in... You live in Tomorrowland. What are the lottery numbers? <laughs> Tell us quick. <laughs> uh, we were talking about what... what what you would do if uh, if you won the lottery, some, some asshole won a bill a billion point five or something recently, mm -hmm. and we're talking like on the show with the dude grows. We were talking about like what you would do, and I was like, dude, I would probably just get fat and get on drugs again. I don't know if it'd be a good look for me. It would because you could just get clean. But what's the fun in that? Like I just broke the game. You know what yeah, I've but, always wanted to do for real? If I ever won like a preposterous amount of money, my inner 13 year old has wanted this forever. Just because I always love the Simpsons line when Homer's like, oh, don't be an idiot. Statistics can be used to prove anything. 13% of people know that. You know, I always love how like percentages, statistics can be manipulated. And if I ever won like a several million dollars i always wanted to print out a bunch of billboards that say how many non-smokers die every day it just says that Tw 10 million non-smokers die every day it just says that you know i just want to play the, the statistic game that's my inner troll i've always wanted to do that how many non-smokers <laughs> die every day it's got to be a shitload non-smoking oh, is bad for you oh god it's horrible for you not smoking i never touched this stuff you know, I mean, whatever way you want a statistic to lean, I'm sure there is a statistic to prove or disprove whatever you want. Speaking of The Simpsons, you know how everyone says, like, The Simpsons predicts the future? 
Mm-hmm. It's all a bunch of nonsense and everything, but I have something that I'm going to posit where they really did predict the future and it might change the entire fucking existence because in order to solve all of the bullshit problems that are going on today with social media and the political sphere and all this hatred and everything, you remember in Treehouse of Horrors, there's an episode where fucking they wrote a song to get people to not look at the monsters and the song was just, just don't look. Just don't look. Yeah. Just don't look. Just don't look. And I always want to repeat that of like, you want to know how to save the future? Just don't look, man. Just don't look. I mean, I hate to say it. That's what most of us do. A lot of people, man. Yeah. You know, I didn't know who won the Super Bowl until about two weeks ago when some chick on Tinder ruined it for me. It's the Tinder chicks always ruining everything. Dude, I grind Tinder like I used to grind online poker. I'm just on there fucking just playing hands, bro. You got to play hands. In fact, I'm supposed to text this girl. I should probably text her. She's a Hispanic origin of some manner. You don't, you don't want to leave those girls hanging. No. She'll cut you, bro. <laughs> oh, man. You know what's crazy, though? Like, for real, for real, for real, for real? Is that, like, I've noticed, like, through the online dating game, I do Hinge and Tinder for anyone uh, interested in what the game out here in Colorado is like. And fucking, for real, I got my first AI girl that my my red flags were going off. But like I follow, I got like, I followed her to the phone number and then it wasn't until like her hints profile got like suspended that I put it all together. And I was like, oh my God, dude, I just got like AI fucking it for real. It's here, man. So fucking dating apps might fucking be gone. They might be over soon because how would you ever know? You got AI catfished. Uh, Yeah, dude. And I'm not I'm not the guy. I don't get fucking guy. I'm not that guy. I am fucking I sniff it out, bro. I pl- I'm a poker player. I see I always say fucking like uh, uh you know what the Turing test is? I Turing test these hoes. What country fucking, was she and, from? What country was she from? Well, so that's so fascinating. That's one of the things that tipped me off. See, Gabe, you're fucking you got the you got the good monocle out. And she was like, I was like, so where are you from? And she's like, oh, I fucking uh, uh, spent some time in Europe and moved back here. And I'm in the finance world. And I was like, yeah, this she is wants the you story. To crypt- she wants to talk to you Dude, about crypto. This, yes. Every well, it didn't get that far. I fucking I abandoned ship as soon as it came into light. But she got me off of the app onto the phone, and I'm that guy. So I realized that shit. But Johnny fucking, you know, look at I love that. Literally, there's a guy in the chat called Captain Obvious telling me to beware. God damn it. First the Vegas prostitutes and now the AI bots. Dude, that's like a that's like a postable thing right there. Captain Obvious said, "Beware of the AI catfish." Words to live by, <laughs> Captain Obvious. The the fish. Oh, uh, dude, check this, Gabe. You want to get in on this with me? Fucking huh. national disgrace has got some dirt weed. I I don't know. I'm hearing good things. Use dirt. Uh, Use you know dirt what? You know what time. separates me and the rest of fucking humanity is that I'm honest. Who else would tell you they got catfished by AI online? Nobody, goddamn it. Only, only old Grambo. That's that speaking stand-up cat- comedy roots. Speaking of catfish, that catfish of Eugene's is starting to revenge. Oh, what a fucking, what a circle back for anyone that watched my most recent Grambo Grows video. Gabe not only opened, but then closed the fucking thing because he he opened up with the, the, the magic mushroom was the, the original strain that you dropped. And then as we were wrapping up, you're like, dude, can I tell you about another one? It doesn't even have a, a name really. So it's re eh? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it uh it already started showing signs in 15 days. Nice. Gene was Gene nice. was uh showing it to me last night and all of a sudden there was little sprouts. I was like, yeah, there we go. Dude, Hell yeah. every, shout out Eugene. Eugene every, Green Monroe. Follow that guy on Instagram. He he's fucking killer grower and awesome dude. Dude, every single person I've shown that weed and had smell it says that it's the most offensive weed <laughs> they've ever smelled. Yeah, I want to try it. I mean, that's that's exactly my fucking... And I love the horrid. We, we got to work on getting the flavor to match the smell. I think it could be a little... like I think it could taste a little more like it smells. But we're also going to do some live resin with it, too. Nice. The goal was just to save it first, you know? <laughs> right. The revenge doesn't always work, you know? Yeah, no. That, that, I mean, hearing the story, if you guys haven't watched my most recent video, you know, it got uh, age restricted. And, uh, you know, this is what I do. I work with dude grows. I work with jug dealers. My job is to fucking get past as far as we can push the sensors without going over. Right. Make sure we fucking reach out to the people. So when I started doing my own videos, like I know dude, they've been fucking with me so hard. I edited it and re-edited it and re-edited it. And I was just like, fuck it. I have to post it up. And then over the last week of me thinking about it, I finally fucking thought about something. And I was like, let me see. And I edited out a little section and reposted it. Sure as shit. It's able to go up not age restricted. It was me saying the words it's because it's about like the, the best five strains from my friends talking about it. what got us age restricted on that was me saying, you guys are going to want this in your garden. Me saying like, you're going to want the thing, the drugs I'm peddling, you're going to want them. That's what got it age restricted. When I cut that out, it, it went back up. Dude, what the fuck? What a what a bizarre thing to get age restricted over. But if you oh, haven't seen it, it's able to be up there. And if you want to support, one of the things you can do is share because the age restriction makes it so you cannot share it. And so now it is shareable. So fucking share that shit because Gabe, I don't even know if Gabe's seen the final edit yet. The fucking I uh, haven't. I oh, dude, it. you you come off pimp. You come off like thoughtful. You're like the weed Bob Ross at the end of this video. Oh wow, I should yeah, uh, like tease the hair. The mic episode seems to be doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, you know what? Funny thing, like we always talk about the littlest goddamn things. I changed the thumbnail, uh, like a day and a half in because I wasn't really liking the results, and it just goes broop, and I kept the title the exact same. I just I changed the thumbnail from saying like the history of strains to who did this, and who did this, you know, did way better. I, I love the YouTube. What you people click on, all you people in chat, you people drive me nuts with what you cl click, what you do and do not click on. Not you guys in chat. You guys are fucking hardcore, what, but what you, all those other people you, watching, who the fuck knows? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> you people. You know, the fucking the Cadillac drivers, you know, the pumpkin eaters, those pumpkin eaters. You know what I'm talking about. Those goddamn jump, jump rope and you know the kids with the fucking with the forks, people that use forks. You know what I'm it remind about. It, was, it was reminding me of the Chappelle Show episode with the real world, the real world, and uh, and the white kid lives with like the whole all the black guys and like in uh, I think Harlem or something, and he walks out. He's like, "Will you people stop making all that noise?" And she's like, "What do you mean, you people?" <laughs> The best, uh -oh. what do you mean, you people joke is from Tropic Thunder, <laughs> where Robert Downey Jr. is like, what do you mean, you people? And then the actual black guy's like, what do you mean, <laughs> you people? It's funny because, uh, it's funny because, you know, they're, you know, I've had this discussion as of late, you can kind of appreciate it being a comedian, but, uh, you know, we've talked about, like, what movies could be remade. You know, and uh, we were talking about uh, trading places, you know, like that yeah. scene, that scene yeah, where Dan Aykroyd very relevant. Is, 
the black dreadlock well, guy in the street, like the yeah, he's the Jamaican. Yeah, no, that's on not, the train. Yeah, man. That's not gonna work. But yeah, Tropic Thunder is like borderline one of those movies that like you could maybe not remake nowadays. You know, like it might be a little. Joe Might Rogan asked uh, Robert Downey Jr. when he was on his podcast. He, he's like, could you make that today? And Robert Downey Jr.'s response was, well, you could do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you you could make it. Would would it go over? You know, probably not. But maybe because I'm always surprised people being in comedy, people always say shit like, Oh, well, you couldn't do that today. And then smash cut to some fucking famous movie. Like when Tropic Thunder came out, you couldn't do that. Th that wasn't some magic time when being in blackface in the 2000s was okay. There wasn't that time. They just yeah, did but if it. You think of it movies awesome. like, if you think of movies like Blazing Saddles and stuff like that, like, you know, there, there's definitely some, there's definitely some, uh, you get a little more kickback, we'll say, you know? See, in Guerrero, obviously, he knows the in, ins and outs of it. And so there's two different functions inside of YouTube. There is the, is this video meant for anyone under 18? And there's the age restriction. Age restriction is a misnomer oh, that right. YouTube uses to obfuscate, to, misla to, to mislabel what they want you to fucking... Think it's not actually age gating; it's subscriber gating. It's share gating. You, when you're age restricted, you can't be shared without a warning. You can't be watched without a warning. You, you don't get pushed out into the uh, the uh, the browse feature of the YouTube homepage with what's also known as impressions in your uh, you, in your YouTube analytics. You don't get any impressions, like you know. So I don't know if if you're if you're auto age gating yourself, like there's already the button that says this is not meant for children, not for anyone under 18. So I don't know. I don't know what more, cause I don't want anyone under 21 watching these fucking videos, but you know what I do want people that aren't already subscribed to us watching them. You know, we had uh jug dealers had its first age gating and it was with Neil from fucking new millennium. This guy is like an old scientist, like wise man, like, you fruits, know, it's like fruits, Harley Smith. Oh, fruits and nuts. Fruits and nuts. <laughs> I wonder, I might, I might edit out fruits and nuts and re-upload just out of curiosity. Just out of curiosity. Because, yeah, if you guys didn't catch the Jug Dealers episode with the uh, new millennium Neil on there, dude, that was, Neil dropped some science on us, dude. That yeah. episode fucking, Neil's yeah. a beast. He's he's one of the dudes you just shut up and listen. Yes, for real. So, which is very upsetting. I, I expected that the episode was going to do really really good, but you know, <laughs> yes, I fucking I turn into a little Porky Pig every right now and then when I fucking when I lose the thread. Yeah, you'll just have to re-edit it. Is intense. Yeah, Neil's. Yeah, Neil's. that's the thing. I. I had no clue what to even take out, much like my own video when I was like, I didn't know what to, I edited it three times and it turns out it was this little thing. Same thing. I mean, I'll try editing out fruits and nuts and see what happens because I think, I think it's worth it. Oh, yeah. No, Neil is super intense. We didn't even scratch the surface with that dude. You know? No. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, Grambo. Well, look, yeah, I think I'm going to jam. I want to call Eugene before it gets too late. Fuck yeah, buddy. Well, yeah, no, it's quarter after 10. Germany's now officially legalized. So shout out to all those fucking. Uh, That's the funny. The I leave, I'll, I'll leave you with this because this is the funny story I was going to tell. So I told you earlier that my neighbor came over. You know, 67, started telling me how he's, like, smoking weed and doing mushrooms nowadays. So I, t I turned him, you know, he said he's been traveling a lot. He said he's been, he said he, he just got his international driving license, right? And I was like, oh, man, I was like, you know, my partner was over in Germany and he was telling me how you can, uh, 
how you can go to the police station and you can take a test and uh and you can drive you can drive high and he's like oh yeah bro he's like i'm already planning on doing that dude he's like i'm going over to germany he's like the first thing i'm doing is going down to the police station with a bag of weed so i can pass the test <laughs> i tried so googling I that i couldn't find any stories about that being a thing but this is the second or third time i've heard it indirectly well i mean i will find it funny enough you know i told carl we should uh we should get we should get together and uh and smoke some weed and drink some beers i won't do the mushrooms but yeah no maybe 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 we got to one of these days the tincture I almost, I almost regret not doing the tincture in Vegas. Fucking, my problem with mushrooms is the indigestion. So the tincture sounds like it's legit. The last two times I've taken mushrooms, I did it accidentally on both times. No, well that's yeah, because and, that's how you have uh, a bad time. I, no, I didn't have a bad time either time, but I was around my kid both times, and I don't really like. I don't want to trip around my kid. You know, right? Of course. Um, it, although it was the last time was at the Nuggets parade last year when the Nuggets won the championship, mm. and I was with a bunch of people, and there's a chocolate bar going around, and I was like, "Oh, dude, I want some chocolate." Yeah, it was a total April Fool's, bro. Mm -hmm. I was like, "I want some chocolate," and so I went to grab some, and my other buddy like slaps my hand away from it but i mean there's like a million people down there dude i couldn't hear anything so i was like dude give me this chocolate and i go <laughs> and i take a couple squares and i don't think much of it i have my kid on my shoulders we're watching you know the parade every you know we're watching the presentation hour and a half later i'm up at the monkey barrel over by the shop and i'm eating Love lunch the monkey barrel and it starts kicking in and i'm sitting here and i'm like oh fuck, dude i'm like i think something was in those chocolates and so uh i asked i asked my boy i'm like hey what was in those chocolates he's like i try to tell you bro there's mushrooms in there and i was like oh bro i thought it was cannabis man i'm like come on so yeah i spent the rest of the afternoon like you know, decently, decently suited, but it's no. just, it yeah. was right when like, it was like right when my kid was like crawling on me, he's like 11, but still right when he was crawling on me, all of a sudden I'm like, <laughs> you look like your mushrooms are about to kick in right now. I always get, I always so, get the yawns. All the, all the sensory stuff when you're tripping is like real intense, you know? Oh yeah. And I already I already don't like people. I already don't like people touching me, so that and just the weird psychedelia of your kid. It's like I made you, bro. It's, it's weird. It, it, it you that I hate to say it, like that is the shit that starts going through your head. You're it's like, weird. "Whoa, dude, you are my creation and now you're calling on me." I am quite Mushrooms high. equals life is weird. It's true. It's interesting to me, you know, like, I think you and I were having that discussion, like, mushrooms are like the trannies of the drug world, you know, they just like, they just like all of a sudden boosted past everybody, you know, like that was, Chappelle, that was Chappelle's whole skit. Chappelle wasn't like out there. He was like, dude, he's like, I just don't understand how like, you know, black people have been trying to get freedom for like hundreds of years. And then all of a sudden you guys come in out of left field and it's like, it's wild for me. Like cannabis still is like schedule one. And like here, like every therapist in the country is talking about giving their patients mushrooms. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, you're a like, lot of my friends have done the ketamine therapy here in Denver. I'm thinking about doing it. I hear good things. Dude, my, my, uh, my ex-wife's father, who is like, staunch republican heavy against drugs like all kinds of shit um 
they they had him on ketamine therapy a couple years ago for some stuff and i was just like it's crazy to me because yeah. again we we even schedule one like weed is still schedule one. We can sit here and do talk about all this stuff. Weed is schedule one. Like as of today, weed is worse than cocaine. Remember that. Weed is worse than cocaine as far as the government is concerned. Shit, as far as YouTube's concerned. But any of it. It's craziness. Fuck, man. Words that we got to change, Mr. Gabe. We got to get that. We got to change it. I don't know how it's going to change, but in the meantime, we just got to overgrow the government, bro. It's all about the vocabulary you use. I hate to say it, that's why I don't say weed and I say cannabis all the time. We just got to raise our fist to heaven like tiny antenna to God. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. All right, Gabe, doggy. Well, I'll see you on Tuesday up at the fucking... Up at the jug, the, the jug den. Thanks for hanging out with me. All you fucking guys hanging out. Thank you. We had uh, over 120 strong. That's definitely my uh, my record for going live. So thank you oh, guys wow. so much. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to make this a, a, a Sunday thing. So uh, if you're around, Gabe, you know, I'll I'll be doing this. I'll drop a I'll drop a link out there. So hell yeah, love you guys. All right, boys. Well, I'll see y'all out there. Bye, everybody. Peace.